Mercedes' performance this year has been nowhere near what we've come to expect. So what exactly is going on at Mercedes? Why did they seem to perform better in the race than qualifying, but only slightly? And do they have any hope of winning races this year? To help answer those questions, we've got Scarbs in to explain the F1 engineering. So Mercedes' topsy-turvy season uh, continued in Saudi Arabia. What happened in qualifying for Hamilton when Russell uh, had no problems whatsoever? Uh, and then we go to the race and it was perhaps the difference. Certainly Russell held his own uh, at the front of the midfield, whereas Hamilton was able to kind of gather some pace back up, aided by that tyre strategy. No real explanation to exactly why that has happened. Hamilton said that they'd gone too far with a, a setup strategy. So Mercedes were trying to set the car up for the race to get the hard tyres working as well as possible and make them last. But this seems to have gone wrong in qualifying, especially for Hamilton, who certainly wouldn't have wanted to start back in 16th. It's obvious that Mercedes have a fundamental problem with this car. And one of the biggest issues is our old friend, Porpoising. But the problem isn't what we originally thought. We saw lots of other cars struggle with this. Mercedes didn't initially, but then certainly in the second test did, clearly uh, in the first race, and slightly less to an extent in Saudi Arabia. But you do have to remember that the Jeddah track is billiard table smooth, no gradient, no bumps, uh, very few curbs that you need to ride. So maybe that was masking the problems. So what the problem is with porpoising, uh, this is quite interesting because this story has evolved uh, since we first started seeing it back at the beginning of the shakedown. And it's not quite what we thought. Very much in the past, everyone's talked about porpoising being an aerodynamically led problem, the underfloor stalling. And that really isn't the case. I've spoken to quite a few engineers now. And James Allison in Mercedes' own debrief actually said, and I'll quote, the mechanisms that cause it is not completely understood yet, but are different from what the media are saying. And what the media are saying is it's an aero stall that leads to the car bouncing up and down at the back. Now that's not the case. As we understand, the initial porpoising is kicked off by suspension problems, either the car grounding or hitting a bump. And then as the car tries to rebound, the aero then starts moving about in terms of the center of pressure and the amount of downforce you've got and that's undamped, the rear suspension's undamped, the two start fighting each other and you get this uncontrolled porpoising. The only way that you can rectify this short term is to lift the car up. And Mercedes say that they did that. They've lifted the car up, but that will lose them performance, which obviously they don't want. But it's the only solution they have short term. Fixing this problem is not that straightforward and will take some time. So what about those almost non-existent side pods on the Mercedes? Are they affecting the car and are they making the porpoising worse? Well, James Allison, Chief Technical Officer at Mercedes, actually alluded to the porpoising getting worse when they changed the pods. Now, that isn't necessarily that the two are directly related. It could be that the amount of downforce changed with the new side pods. Obviously, that's what the team wanted. But it's not to say that something fundamental in the shape of those side pods is leading to this porpoising. Again, as I've said, it's much more about suspension than it is about aerodynamics. So I don't think that we're going to necessarily see a change in that concept it's fundamentally sound, it's quite different to what everyone else is doing and it's key to the way that they're approaching the downforce versus drag question for this year. They've obviously decided that's the direction they want to go. So if we see a change to the side pods, it probably won't be because of porpoising, more because they may want to take some drag out of the car to uh, match what some of the other currently more successful cars are doing with theirs. So we can't blame the zero pods, but look at the results and you'll see that the Mercedes engine cars are struggling towards the back of the field. So is there an issue with the Merck power units? Are they having issues with the new fuel or have Red Bull and Ferrari moved themselves significantly forwards? All the Mercedes powered teams seem to be just very slow uh, on the straights and struggling. So first of all, it's very hard to pick apart what the fundamental problem here is for all the Mercedes runners. Now you could say that the common point is the power unit, but equally we can see that all of those teams, McLaren, uh, Mercedes, uh, Williams and Aston Martin have got fundamental aero problems and they're having to solve that by running lots of wing, they're having to throw away various aspects of performance uh, in order to gain lap time and that means that the power unit really to be honest we can't assess where the power unit's at because no one's really running flat out uh, with a perfect setup 
Now we've seen some data and it does suggest that all the Mercedes uh, are slower on the straights, definitely, but also clipping, which means the hybrid system is running out of battery before the end of the straights and the Mercedes. In fact, the, you know, the factory Mercedes was actually losing pace at the end of the straights. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lack of power in the entire power unit. Clipping is more about where you're choosing to use your battery. So maybe rather than focusing on the straights, all the Mercedes runners are choosing to use their hybrid deployment through cores to get acceleration in areas where they can use the performance rather than trying to run as fast as possible on straights, potentially leading to porpoising. So I don't believe that's an issue. Equally, because all of them are having problems, I wouldn't be surprised if they're just easing back on the strap modes that's available to the engine, saving that engine life for when the chassis can really exploit it, so that when they do have a car that really can use the most of its power unit, they can just kind of turn it up to 11, get the maximum performance. So far, it seems that we have four cars battling for the podiums this year. And honestly, it's really exciting. But what would be better than that? Well, six cars, including Lewis and George. But with Mercedes currently off the ultimate pace, is it likely that we'll see them battling for wins anytime soon? Well, the factory at Brackley do have a habit of turning things around quickly, and we can never discount them. And Scarbs seems to agree. Well, first of all, it's the porpoising. So that could be something as simple as re-damped, uh, re-sprung rear suspension, maybe playing with the, the, the rocker geometry, stuff like that could actually allow them to get that degree of suspension control to stop the porpoising kicking off in the first place. Everyone will have it to a degree. It's something that all of these cars run with at a very low level. Uh, and you can see that as you go onto the straights, but yeah, they're not going to have this violent porpoising. So I think that's the first thing that needs to be solved. Uh, we look at Jeddah, it looks like they had it under control, but as I said earlier, it's a very smooth track. When we go now to um, Albert Park, Imola, we have no idea the surface at, at Miami. That is really going to be quite a struggle for them. You know, there's going to be lots of bumps, lots of camber in the roads, uh, you know, maybe not such, so much in the way of long straights, but certainly there'll be high speed sections. So I think the next few races could be quite painful for Mercedes while they sort out this rear suspension. I think they'll have that sorted, certainly by the time we get to Spain, maybe with some modified aspects of the aerodynamics and the build of the rear floor just to make sure that it's not bouncing up and down too much. So we'd expect the Spanish Grand Prix in May to be Mercedes' target for a bigger update and getting closer to the Red Bulls and Ferraris. If that's the case, Lewis and George will still have 17 races to compete. And that's still a lot of racing, and a lot can happen. So we shouldn't write off Mercedes just yet. We started a newsletter, so if you want to know more about F1 and want to know everything that's interesting in our sport each week, sign up for free with the link below. And if you want to know what I think of Leclerc's racecraft against Max, click this video here. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.